Hey guys, Ramblin' Bob here again. I just wanted to make a quick video just in case if, uh, some folks out there don't know how to do uh, a mod or an adaption from uh, either uh, Anderson Power Pole or the DC Barrel or the Cigarette Lighter Adapter to MC4. Everything that I use is MC4 now. I like it. It's the industry standard. It's waterproof. It's not watershed. It's waterproof, and that's what's good. So you have that little O-ring in there. So when you put two of these together, I'm going to rip these apart so you can see. So when you put two of them together like that, that creates a water barrier. Like, literally, it's waterproof. That's nice. Um, I don't think you can put it under water for long, but as far as definitely watershed and waterproof above water, th this, is, uh, this is industry standard, and there's a reason why. Uh, it's a little hard to get apart. I use my fingers, and I squeeze these little pins and pop it apart. If you can't do that, sometimes the fingers are too big, or if... Uh, uh, you can't, just can't get your, finger, your fingernails or whatever. You, you have a little tool that comes along with uh, this Bouge RV um, uh, MC4 uh, uh, crimper, basically. And you see these little teeth right here? So those little teeth go inside the slots where your fingers would go, okay? And you push them in there like that, and then you pull it apart. Now, what that does is it does the same as what your fingers did, except you don't have to squish your fingers in there. I just, I, I'm so used to it, I guess. I just kind of, I come from a background of uh, construction work, so we just kind of rip stuff apart. Um, the little pins, you can see they're little springs like that, and that's what the tool does. It squishes them together so you can, uh, you know, kind of get them out of there. See, it kind of pushes them together just a tad. But I'm going to show you how to make an MC4 connection. So we have two. Uh, let's say this is uh, one, one set, basically, for one solar panel. And I ripped this off because I wanted to show you um, how to put them together this way, obviously. Um, but what you, th these are the tools you should need. Uh, this is a nipper. And basically what that does is that you can grab the wire that you're going to, obviously you unplug the wire from any source first. That's the first step. And then you basically put the wire in there and then you just nip it where you want to put your connection. See how quick that did that? That little dot right there just popped off. Very, very simple. So that's the nipper, okay? I just use a cheap one. I think it's P Pittsburgh or something. No, Master Force. Uh, not a very fancy one, but does the job, and it was really cheap. So I thought, okay, so that's out of the way. Now, you know you need that. Now, this is called a wire stripper. Now, this is really cool because it can also do that nipping if you need, but I like this. It's much more straight, and it's much more sturdy and strong. So uh, this is another very cheap tool. You can get it for, like, I think 2 bucks at a Harbor Freight or something like that. But basically, this in this area, you strip the wire off so you can see the copper or whatever's underneath it. And then on this side is the crimper. Now, I don't recommend these crimpers for these connections. Some people will use them. I don't recommend them. Uh, and th the reason for that is um, you don't get a good snug connection. At least I don't. And then these are your, your little nippers on the front, your little wire cutters. Uh, so basically, you're going to use this. Um, to take your wire, and this is probably eh, this is probably not much at all. It's pretty tiny. So we're going to put a let's put it in 14 and see. And when you make your cut, you want to squeeze it and twist it. And what it does by twisting is it cuts all the way around in a circle. So that way, when you pull it, see it pops right off. And now you have basically yeah, that looks like about yeah, that's just maybe a 12 a 12 gauge wire in there. Um, when I fan it out, you can kind of see it. It's it's, uh, it's lighting cable. Um, it's one of the first cables that we ever made. But that's about 12-gauge lighting cable in there. It's enough for small panels. If you go a uh, bigger array or something like that, I, I'd highly recommend 8, 10-gauge. 10 10-gauge 10 is usually safe, but I'd recommend even bigger if you got more, more power coming in. So now once you have, I use about a quarter of an inch. A quarter of an inch is usually a very, very safe bet. Um, you want to get enough wire in there, obviously, and enough so it doesn't fly out. Now, you're going to put one of these little guys on. So, which one should I pick? The little one or the big one? All right, let's go with the big one. Now we can see it better on camera. I figure I'll give you the choice. Okay, so this is the Bouge RV. Now, this is this is a really cool tool. Um, you, like I said, you, you can make these connections without it. Um, I just, I highly recommend picking this up because it's so simple. Oh my gosh, like it's seconds. Literally, you can make a connection and have your solar panels outside. Getting power, which is what you need and what you want. So a lot of people would go like this, okay? A lot of people would put the wire inside here, okay? And then they would try to, 
balance this and put it inside here. I, I personally, I don't like that. And I'll tell you why. Because if this turns or twists, right, you're not going to make a good clean connection. This Okay, so here's what I do. I put the port, the, the, the little pin, inside the middle one. That seems to work the best, okay? And then I push it down just a little bit. You see how it kind of clamps it in there like teeth? Now, the reason I do that is because, look, it doesn't move. See, it's hard to get that to move. You just don't, don't pinch it yet. And then what I do is I put the wire inside there like that, right up to the insulation. Okay, it's hard. I know it's hard to see on this camera. Um, and then you pinch it down like that very tightly. And then what that gives you is a very, very good crimp. As you see, it's a double crimp, one from one way, one from the other way. I know it's hard to see on these cameras, uh, but it's crimped two ways now. So basically it looks like this. It's folded in to grab some of the wires and squeeze them this way and some of them and squeeze them this way. And then they squish together like that. So you have like a double, triple uh, crimp. Uh, much, much better quality. So then now you're, you're basically done. Um, you have your connection on your cord where you need it. And now because we used this one, the big one is actually what's known as the positive one. Um, it could be different on yours, that's positive on mine, which is actually the small one, which is weird, because here you have the female and the male. So, you, you take the small pin one, okay, and now you're just going to, well, before you do that, we don't want to jump ahead of time, take one of the caps, put it on there, take one of the seals, put it on in this direction. Sometimes it's easier to put them on before you do the crimp, either way is okay, um, but you don't want to almost make the mistake like I did and not put it on at all because then you wouldn't have these little guys to, to finish this, you know, and make it uh, water waterproof. So basically, very simple. If your cable is hard enough, you should be able to just go, did you hear the click? Just shove it right in there and it clicks. Clicking means the little teeth, the little burrs on there went like this and they literally went click and locked in there on something like that. They locked so you can't yank them back out. So now you have your your water seal almost done. You put your little seal in there. Okay, that squishes in there. And there's little teeth on there. I don't know if you can see that. It's hard to see. See the little grooves? They line up just perfect, so they make like little teeth. That keeps this from turning when you apply pressure to this guy. Then you push this on there, and you twist. And that's literally as easy as it was. Now, when I first learned solar panels, I was kind of... Um, uh, you know, kind of overwhelmed as far as all these connections and how to do them. And, you know, are they are they safe? Are they right? Are they proper? It's really easy. And then to make sure this is tight, you can either snug it with your hands, which I don't recommend, or that's where these little tools come in again, okay? So these little guys, you want to put one like this. See the little opening here? You put it through the wire like that and then pull back. And what that does is it goes, it fits into those little grooves. You see that? So now it doesn't move. And then the other one has this weird little shaped hole in the middle, this thing. And you put that right on top of the port like that, okay? So now you have two sides that are going to twist together. And basically you wrench until, I usually want to do it until I hear one click. You hear that? That means it's as tight as it should be. Some people go less, some people go more. I recommend one click. And one click usually gets them perfectly tight. They're, they're very, very um, uh, not stretched out. You know, it's not too much. And then you have a waterproof seal on this side too with that little rubber seal, uh, the O-ring that kind of squeezes around. And then with the shape of this, it kind of mushes it down. So now you have a legit waterproof port. And then hopefully if I made it long enough, so you can put that together and then wear it kind of as a watch or brass knuckles or something. But